Good morning. Great to be back with you. There's so much happening in our world. It's moving faster than, I don't know, speed of light, speed of sound. It seems news travels at an incredibly quick pace. For those who are interested in the foreign press, you can certainly read about America. But we can read if we wish about every country on the planet and understand people's motivations, especially the motivations of those in power. So let's look at a couple of those in power today. Sure, Trump, because he's been accused of committing fraud by cooking his books and also by interfering in the 2016 election, he was attempting to obstruct justice. He's just been found guilty in New York City courts. Sentencing is in July. The fact of the matter is, when Mueller investigated him, he found obstruction of justice, which is a high crime and misdemeanor and doesn't really have to require intent to be a criminal as an actionable, impeachable crime. The House didn't think it was worthy of taking up and pursuing, but there were at least four different times that Trump tried to shut down the special counsel's actions and activity. At least 14 people, separate people, were indicted for committing crimes against the Constitution. Trump was going to be not indicted, but impeached on obstruction of justice. And he did obstruct justice during the 2016 election and then when he was president. When he was president, he didn't want the special counsel and he empowered many people to try to shut down the special counsel's indictments and investigations. We'll never know. Did he really collude with the Russians? Because after a 30 year friendship with Putin and Russians in general, who were at the forefront of the oligarchs in the Putin regime, there was no quid pro quo to be found. All you could find was a seamless integration of information about Hillary Clinton, the DNC, our voting machines being passed to Trump. Now Trump is experiencing a heyday with his followers. Will it last? I don't know. Am I dismayed that two people in his prior cabinet who were found not to be reputable professional individuals, Scott and Jackson, are now going to be on the Intelligence Committee? I find this a travesty of justice. I don't understand what the Republican Party is doing. You're now going to make them have the FBI accountable to Perry after he was sanctioned by the FBI? And you're going to give secrets to Jackson after he was demoted in the military from Admiral? These are not the kinds of people I would want to see in my government, having 
privileged information about what's happening in the world of foreign affairs. I wouldn't want them making policy, not for anyone. They shouldn't be in government. Just like I'm hoping there's an inflection point, a pivot point in Israel, and the Israelis will finally get rid of Bibi Netanyahu because his cabinet is composed of firebrands who incite violence. Violence against the other, and yet they don't want to fight. Ben Gavir has no intention of letting his constituents fight. And yet they want perpetual war, war over the release of hostages. Well, I'm hoping that saner voices will prevail, that you will get a center-right party and you'll get a center-left party. And perhaps those two parties will join together. For me, whether it's Yair Golan, who I respected immensely when I met him when I was in Israel, or it's Eisenkot, another retired major general who I respect, I'm hoping one of them becomes the future prime minister of Israel. Both are statesmen and they'll find diplomatic solutions to Lebanon and the war in Gaza, and they'll accept international help because that's the future for Israel. It was envisioned 10 years ago when I was at the Technion, Israel's MIT. That was the vision that Israel would be a beacon of knowledge and innovation for the Middle East. War, all it does is cripple nations, all nations and all people, and leaves a scar that takes years to heal. I'm not for war. I'm not for war that accomplishes nothing. And while the world focuses on Israel and condemns Israel, which it shouldn't because they're not looking at Hamas and Hamas's ill deeds, they should also look at Sudan where famine is really happening and massacres and devastation are occurring daily. And they should be looking at Ukraine and now I know why the global South doesn't care about not getting wheat from Ukraine. The global South, which is South Africa, has been bought off by Russia. Russia funded the ANC and luckily the people knew in time and the ANC in South Africa has been defeated. Modi in India, also did not fare well. No, he's got to reign now with a coalition. So while Trump may feel he's riding high in America, we don't know. We don't know if that's really going to happen. Yeah, he's got a little fame now, but will he carry the day? This voter certainly hopes not. So I think there's a lot to be hopeful about in this world. So let's see where else democracy can prevail. I think the world is changing and it's changing fast and the extremes are not going to be wanted.